bass a lot so it's like at the translate you know different <laughs> different fingerings and things on um, but boy this this instrument has got such a great twang I love I just love to play the flamenco kind of things on it. Well that was Besame Mucho obviously and um let's see what else can I play that company we're in the middle of a driving windstorm here <laughs> uh, so a little disconcerting but, um, for solo bass <laughs> it's like people talking when they're playing your solo it's kind of like that so Aww. bass players are used to it you know <laughs> let's see what else can I play here how about if I just play um is it okay to sing you think they uh, hear me if I sing hmm? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, okay. Well, then you're going to get more of that. Huh? All right, I'll just play, I'm going to play a little bit on a blues. <laughs> Nothing's any good without you. 
Sound okay out there? Any? It looks quarter, so this is amazing. Oh. We've got Jennifer from Brazil. Thanks very much. Yeah, Thank you, Jennifer from Brazil. Oh. Wow. That's pretty amazing. You can reach the people all over the world, but boom. So that's a great thing. When I was growing up, you know. <laughs> Heck, I grew up under Eisenhower. How far back I go. Okay, let's see. How about, I don't know if the younger ones are going to recognize this next one, but it, it's a, a tune that was written by Joni Mitchell. And it's the first tune on her Blue album. If you're familiar with the Blue album, that's one of her primary ones. And um, called, I'm not going to sing on this one, but it's called All I Want. And I kind of put my little twist on it, so hopefully you'll recognize it. Thank you. 
this again. I got distracted by that. Thank you. 
sound okay? I mean, I'm probably playing it too hard, but. <laughs> okay. All right. Has anybody uh, asked a question or anything out there? Just love that this is amazing. Oh, I'm glad they think so. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm amazing right now, but thank you. Um, it's been a long time. I haven't really performed since the, this the last couple of days now I've performed it. Uh, this is uh, getting some used to, getting, taking some getting used to. And uh, <laughs> as always, there's extenuating circumstances. I know last year and now you were kind of competing with the, another booth that were going loud and I saw you turn your face. <laughs> yeah, we got, I, you turned your, it's like survival, but then the jazz police or the sound police come by. And, uh, it's a catch 22 always at the NAMP. But so we, we do make some pretty profound music there a lot of the time. You know, there's, often it's just cacophony. I always have a really good time watching you and Benny sing. Me and, and who? Benny Chong. Oh, Benny Chong. Well, sure. Benny and I did that lovely tour of China for you guys. And that's one of the highlights of my career, seriously. Playing touring China, in my, my first time in China, and years ago, I was married to a Chinese person, so I had quite a bit of insight, you know, into at least the cuisine. <laughs> um, but it was so great to be over in China and actually have the real thing. You know, that was, that was when they treated us so lovely. Every, after every concert, we would have hot pot. Oh, hot pot. <laughs> well, it, it was October when you went? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it was in the fall. It was in the fall. But uh, that was a really lovely, lovely trip. I Eternally grateful. We proselytized Johanna Book Base over there in, did in you, China. Did you play any mahjong, or did Chris teach you to play mahjong? No, we never played mahjong. <laughs> there was no time. We were, we were either, either we were playing, or we were eating, or we were in transit. That's How many cities did you guys end up going to? Well, Benny and I played like our own separate tour right. there for a while, so I'm, I'm kind of, God. it must have been at least a dozen. Yeah, you guys were all over in yeah. China. And we went all over the north, yeah. south, you know, yeah. It's beautiful. We ended up in the south. Shenzhen was our last one, I believe. Yeah. I think so. What was your favorite NAM experience? Or maybe NAM here? A favorite NAM experience? Well, last, yesterday when I was saying that I, my very first time at NAM was for Tommy Tedesco in 1986. And he asked me to come and play. He was endorsing. Fender guitars, you know, oh and um, so I played, I brought my string bass, he wanted me to bring my string bass, so I didn't have any endorsements then or anything. We played a Fender for a couple of years, and then there was a bidding war for Tommy between Bender, Fender and Gibson. So I played at the Gibson booth, but they didn't want me to play the string bass, and they didn't have any left-handed instruments, oh. so they took a Gibson Thunderbird bass, which looks like it's upside down anyway, and I played a few years after that, I was just walking around the NAMM show and I, I was going by the Hoffman booth where they make the Beatle bass that Paul McCartney plays, you know, and, and I'm left-handed, so I just, I saw a left-handed bass, I picked up and started mooling around, and all these people started to run out of the woodwork, ah, left-handed bass player, and, and uh, I got signed <laughs> to an endorsement thing with Hoffman. Oh, wow. They, made, they, they gave me basses, and they made me a string bass, which I play to this day, it's brilliant. 
And then um, I guess it was about six years ago, five years ago, I was um, Jeff Linsky called me and said, "You got to come check out the Ohana booth." And they got this little bass. You, you should really. And and I guess he warned you I was coming because uh, Lewis had strung one of these up left-handed for me. And I fell in love with it. That was, that was another highlight of the man show for me. It was hooking up with Ohana and uh, and it literally means family. And it, you guys sure do make me feel like I'm part of it. You know? Yeah, much appreciated. Thank you. You just and Abel played at the NAM Making Music Museum too the last couple of years, didn't you? Yeah, we played that stage they have outside yeah. of the, the, the hall. Yeah, that was really fun. A lot of people come to that. So, I get one more tune, okay? Can yeah, I do one more? Yeah, do one more. And okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, watch her while you can. Live <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, if you're familiar, with the uh, with the peanuts um, television cartoons, um, especially the Christmas one, um, there's a, a the guy that wrote the music name was Vince Guaraldi, and terrific jazz pianist, and, and um, Charles Schultz was aware of him, and the, um, the guys that produced the, the TV things were big fans of his, so he wrote the music for that. First one, he had all these hits, but he had hits. <laughs>
everyone. It's been a pleasure. Um, um, if we do this a year from now, I promise you, I will, my chops will have come back. <laughs> and my brain will function better. And um, it's been a long year, and, and I, I sure do appreciate everybody staying interested. And um, hopefully we'll keep music alive, and things are going to start to get better really soon. But I'm glad you're all watching and, and checking out the Ohana OBE 22 bass ukulele. This is the fretless model. We also have the fretted model. I've added a few of my own little customized things on here, but um, it's really great right out of the box, I guarantee it. And, uh, thanks to Lewis and everyone here at Ohana. <laughs>